Yo, what's going on, y'all? I'm JB Hoops, and today I got my big board 1.0. So I've broken my top 60 prospects down into five tiers, and the rankings in each tier are very fluid. But let's just get it started with some honorable mentions. So I think I have almost 40 honorable mentions. I'll put all of them up on the screen right now so you can pause if you need to. Trevon Brazil especially deserves a shout out as he was looking like a potential first round pick before tearing his ACL. And there's also heaps of other guys who could rise throughout the rest of the season. But let's just get into my top 60 prospects. Starting it off with tier 5 with my prospects ranked 60 through 41. At 60 I have Tiafiel Leonard Jr, the 6'7 sophomore out of Middle Tennessee. Leonard Jr. is an elite defensive prospect, incredible athlete, and covers an insane amount of ground. Offensively, he's starting to put it all together. The shot needs to come around, but he has a ton of upside as a guy who can attack with the catch and wreak havoc defensively. At 59, I have Oso Iguodaro, the 6'9 junior out of Marquette. He's a versatile big with excellent passing vision and touch. He has good mobility on the defensive end, can protect the rim, and play as a small ball five. He can play in multiple spots offensively, he's great in the short roll, and he can hit the midi. And I think he's a real NBA prospect, and I have him at 59. Next up, I have Dylan Mitchell, the 6'8 freshman out of Texas. Dylan Mitchell is really awkward for me to rank. He's been solid and good defensively, and he's a phenomenal athlete, but he just has a very defined offensive role and hasn't really done much outside of that. He's also quite undersized for a big, so he has to show something other than just finishing and rebounding on the offensive end. But the athleticism and defensive potential are intriguing, so I have Dylan Mitchell at 58. At 57, I have the 6'7 senior out of Creighton, Baylor Shireman. Shireman's a great shooter, can pass, and is a really good rebounding wing. He stepped up for Creighton recently and been solid defensively, but it's mainly his incredible shooting versatility that will get him to the NBA. At 56, I have Andre Jackson Jr., the 6'6 junior out of UConn. Ajax is an elite athlete, a defensive playmaker, and he can facilitate on the offensive end. He's a really smart player who just makes winning plays, and he can also knock down the occasional three. His current production level is a little underwhelming, but he'd be worth taking a chance on in the late second round. At 55, I have Julian Phillips, the 6'8 freshman out of Tennessee. He really struggled offensively to start the season, and his jumper needs some work, but I've liked what I've seen from him defensively, and he's been a lot better in conference play. At this point, he should probably come back for another year, but I think a team would gamble on his upside late in the second round for sure. Next up, I have the 6'6 wing out of Kansas, Kevin McCullough Jr. He's an excellent defender with an improving shot. He's a strong finisher at the rim and has the strength and foot speed to guard 2 through 4. He also has excellent hands and an absurd 4.7 steal percentage. He's a really important piece for Kansas, and he'll get to show off his game to a ton of NBA scouts in big games over the course of the season. I have James Naji at 53. The 6'10 Nigerian big man is very raw, but he's a big time athlete with a huge frame at just 18 years old. He's great as a play finisher and an imposing shot blocker with good mobility and an incredible 7'7 wingspan. I really like Naji's game, but he could go with an extra year and more opportunity before entering the draft. But I'm also pretty confident he'll get drafted this year and then just probably stashed. So I have James Naji at 53. At 52, I have Donovan Klingon, the 7'2 freshman out of UConn. Klingon is a monster shot blocker with incredible timing and instincts and an outrageous 14.9 block percentage. He's a super efficient inside scorer, he's relatively mobile and super strong. I'm not usually a huge fan of his archetype for the NBA, but with the recent success of Walker Kessler, I think Donovan Klingon is someone who could fill a similar NBA role. At 51, I have Julian Strother, the 6'7 wing out of Gonzaga. We kind of know what we're getting at this point with Julian Strother. I think he probably could have stayed in the draft last year, but he's a great shooter from all over the floor. His midi hasn't really been falling this year, but it was a major part of his game last year. He's solid defensively, a great rebounding wing, and should be a safe second round pick in the upcoming draft. At 50, I have Adem Bona, the 6'10 freshman out of UCLA. Adem Bona is a phenomenal athlete. He's been great defensively and has finished well inside, but at the moment, he's strictly a play finisher and has been very foul prone, so I could see him returning to school to attempt to become a lottery pick next year. But right now, I have Adem Bona at 50. At 49, I have Tyrese Hunter, the 6' sophomore out of Texas. Hunter is capable of playing on or off the ball. He's improved a lot as a shooter, and once he gets hot like he did against Gonzaga, he's a really tough cover. He's a really intense defender, a great athlete, and has the ability to run an offense like he did last year at Iowa State. And I think he can be a really solid backup point guard in the NBA, so I have Tyrese Hunter at 49. 
At 48, I have City Sissoko, the 6'8 guard out of the G League Ignite. I haven't watched a lot of the Ignite with Scoot Henderson out, but City has been solid. He's got a big frame, can defend multiple positions, and his passing has been great. And his shot has also clearly improved, but he is still very foul prone, and the touch around the basket has to improve. But I definitely think City Sissoko has the talent of a first round pick. At 47, I have Reese Beekman, the 6'3 junior out of Virginia. Beekman is an incredible point of attack defender with excellent hands and defensive instincts. He's a great passer and his jumper has looked good this year. He's shooting just under 47% from three this season, albeit on low volume. If he could be more aggressive and work on his in-between game, I wouldn't be surprised at all if he's drafted in the early second round or even late first. Next up, I have the 6'6 wing out of the New Zealand Breakers, Ryan Rupert. Rupert had some impressive games in the preseason, but struggled offensively to start the actual season before getting injured. So he didn't get to show much and hasn't really found his rhythm since returning. But he's an elite defensive prospect with a crazy 7'3 wingspan and also a pretty intriguing offensive game. He's still very raw, but it'll be interesting to see how he develops over the rest of the season. At 45, I have Mike Miles Jr., the 6'2 guard out of TCU. He's an excellent creator in the pick and roll and a tremendous passer. He can score on all three levels and he's really good at getting downhill. The three ball hasn't really come around this year, but he can definitely shoot it. Mike Miles Jr. is just a winning player who does everything on the floor, and that's why I have him at 45. At 44, I have Coleman Hawkins. The 6'10 junior out of Illinois is an excellent passing big. He's also shown off his defensive versatility, IQ, as well as his jumper. At times, he plays too passively, but he's a fun player to watch, and I think he definitely could be a first-round pick. At 43, I have Eric Gaines, the 6'2 sophomore out of UAB. Gaines is an incredibly explosive athlete with world-class burst and vertical pop. He's an intense defender, a great passer, and his shot has looked a lot better this season. He will definitely have to get stronger and put on some size, but he's a really exciting player that everyone should watch, so I have Eric Gaines at 43. At 42, I have Tyrese Proctor, the 6'5 freshman guard out of Duke. He really struggled to start the season transitioning to the college game, but recently he's looked better and started to flash his shot-making ability and touch around the basket. He's been consistently an amazing playmaker and his handle looks a bit better, and he's also been a lot better than I expected on the defensive end. So if he can show he can effectively score, I wouldn't be surprised if he rises into my top 25 or top 30. But for now, I have Tyrese Proctor at 42. At the top of tier 5 at 41, I have Colby Jones, the 6'6 wing out of Xavier. He's a really skilled player who provides a bit of everything offensively and more than holds his own on the defensive end. He has good size at 6'6. He's been great from behind the arc, shooting 41.7% from 3, and he also has great passing feel. I'm confident he'll be a very solid NBA player, so that's why Colby Jones is at the top of tier 5 at 41. Now moving on to tier 4 with my prospects ranked 40 through 21. Starting off tier 4 at 40, I have Bubba Miller, the 6'11 freshman out of Florida State. Bubba Miller has only played in a few games because of a stupid fucking suspension, but he's got the tools, fluidity, and skill set to be a lottery pick. I like what I've seen from him defensively, but offensively he is still very raw, and with the time he missed, he might end up staying another year and maybe transferring since Florida State suck. But for now, I have Bubba Miller at 40. At 39, I have Tucker DeVries, the 6'7 sophomore out of Drake. He's an excellent shooter with a quick release, soft touch, and great shot versatility. He's a beast in the mid-range, a good passer, and has been solid on the defensive end, but the concerns will be about how he fares defending NBA-level athletes. But with his offensive game and shooting ability, he's an NBA talent for sure. So I have Tucker DeVries at 39. Next up at 38, I have Ricky Council the 4th. The 6'6 junior out of Arkansas is another incredible athlete in this class. He finishes everything inside. He's been great at attacking gaps in the defense and getting to the rim or taking the pull-up jumper when it's given to him. Council plays with great intensity on both ends of the floor, and if the jumper starts to fall more consistently, he could go first round for sure. At 37, I have the 6'7 sophomore out of Creighton, Arthur Kaluma. He hasn't taken the leap some anticipated, but he still had some impressive performances and flashes of his two-way potential. He's a smooth athlete, can defend multiple positions, and has a little bit of self-creation upside as well. I've dropped him a little bit since the start of the season, but I still hold hope he can start to consistently show out. But for now, I have Arthur Kaluma at 37. At 36, I have Terrence Arsenault, the 6'7 freshman out of Houston. I really like his versatility as a big athletic guard who can really defend. He might end up being a two-year guy if his minutes don't increase, but he's had some very intriguing flashes and could also potentially rise a ton during the pre-draft process. So I have Terrence Arsenal at 36. 
I have JJ Starling just ahead of him at 35. The 6'4 freshman out of Notre Dame has been really solid despite his shot not falling. He has a really tight handle and excellent burst, and he's also had some good moments defensively. I would like to see the decision making improve, and his passing indicators are a little bit worrying, but I think the shot will come around, and if it does, he'll definitely be a first round contender. At 34, I have Nikola Juricic, the 6'8 Serbian wing out of Mega. He has struggled with injury early on and the shot has been off for a lot of the season, but he's a high feel 6'8 wing with great vision and a ton of shot creation upside. So if he can start to build some consistency, he'll definitely rise up my board pretty quickly, but for now I have Juricic at 34. One of the best players in the nation, Marcus Sasser, comes in at 33. He's an excellent shot creator, a really good point of attack defender, and the leader of a great Houston team, despite the upset they had earlier this week against Temple. But when his shooting comes back to him, he's going to get some serious first round consideration. He is just that good. So I have Marcus Sasser at 33. At 32, I have the 6'11 freshman out of Duke, Kyle Filipowski. I really like Flip's well-rounded game. He's too big, strong, and athletic against the majority of his opponents. His defense both inside and in space has been solid, and his skill at 6'11 is evident. So if he starts shooting it better from three, I wouldn't be surprised if he moves up a fair bit by my next big board. At 31, I have Jalen Huchofino, the 6'6 freshman guard out of Indiana. Huchofino has intriguing upside as a big guard with great feel. But the rest of his offensive game has really come around recently, where he's been able to display his jumper and poison the pick and roll. If he can keep playing like he has been, he'll easily be a first round pick, but for now I have him at 31. Next up at 30, I have Terrence Shannon Jr., the 6'6 senior out of Illinois. TSJ is a super explosive athlete and a terror in transition. He shot it really well from three over the last two seasons, is a really good slasher and has been very active on the defensive end. He's been on draft radars for a while and is finally putting it all together at Illinois. So I have Terrence Shannon Jr. as my 30th ranked prospect. At 29, I have Judah Mintz, the 6'3 freshman out of Syracuse. Judah Mintz has been really solid for Syracuse all season. He has great burst and can get to the rim at ease. He's improved a ton as a playmaker and been a pest on the defensive end. He does need to start taking and making more threes, but his mechanics are solid and he can knock down the mid-range jumper, so I'm a big fan of Judah Mintz's upside, so I have him at 29. At 28, I have Jordan Walsh. The 6'7 freshman out of Arkansas hasn't been very productive offensively, but he's still been really good on the defensive end and has an insane 7'3 wingspan, as well as the instincts and basketball IQ to be a great defender at the NBA level. I'd like to see him be more aggressive offensively, but the flashes have been very impressive, he just might need a little bit more time. But overall, Jordan Walsh is an excellent prospect, and I think it would be worth gambling on his upside in the late first round. Next up, I have Leonard Miller, the 6'10 forward out of the G League Ignite. Leonard Miller seems a little underrated at this point. He's been super solid in the G League and really stepped up when Scoot got injured. His shot looks a little better, still needs a lot of work, but he can hit the occasional three. But he just looks huge out there, he's super mobile and has made an impact on both ends of the floor. And I think he could be a guy to look out for as a riser, as he continues to develop his game against pros. But right now, I have Leonard Miller at 27. At 26, I have Jordan Hawkins, the 6'5 sophomore out of UConn. Hawkins is an excellent shooter in every way imaginable. He's been getting up a ton of threes and making them in an efficient clip. He's had some nice moments defensively and has great instincts, although it would be nice if he could get to the rim a little more and also start knocking down some shots in the mid-range when he's run off the line. But Jordan Hawkins is a phenomenal shooter who's definitely worthy of being drafted in the first round. At 25, I have probably one of the most polarizing players in college basketball, Amoni Bates. The 6'10 sophomore out of Eastern Michigan started off strong with a huge performance against Michigan where he looked like a superstar. Overall for the season, he has been very solid, averaging over 20 points per game on solid shooting splits. He's still a great shooter with insane range and excellent shot making ability, as he showed this week putting up 43 points, including 29 straight in the first half against Toledo. He's improved his ability to get inside, draw fouls and finish at the rim, but he still has issues with creating separation and staying locked in defensively, so it's definitely still difficult to imagine what his role in the NBA looks like, but his context is very bad and he's still out there hooping and showing why he should be drafted. So for now, I have Amoni Bates at 25. Just out of him at 24, I have Noah Clowney, the 6'10 freshman out of Alabama. 
Clowney has awesome tools and has been excellent defensively. He moves well in space, is good with angles, and has great hands and defensive instincts. As the season's progressed, he's just gotten better and better offensively, showing his abilities as a driver, play finisher, and shooter. And I'm just a big fan of versatile skill sets, so I have Noah Clowney at 24. At 23, I have the 7-1 freshman out of Duke, Derek Lively II. Lively hasn't really done much from a scoring point of view outside of play finishing, but his passing has really impressed me and defensively he's been super impactful, showcasing his mobility and incredible shot blocking timing and instincts. I'd like to see him get more shots up, maybe a few threes as well, but he's just too physically dominant and fundamentally skilled to drop much lower than this. And I do think he'll start upping his performances over the next month or so, but it'll be interesting to track how he develops over conference play. So I have Derek Lively the second at 23. At 22, I have Chris Murray, the 6'8 junior out of Iowa. Following in the footsteps of his twin brother Keegan, Chris Murray has taken a huge offensive leap this season and is currently top 15 in the nation in points per game. He can shoot it from deep, finish inside, and play solid defense, but he will be almost 23 on draft night, and I don't think he quite has the upside Keegan does. But Chris is still a very good prospect regardless, but for now I have him at 22. For the top prospect in tier 4 at 21, I went with Deron Holmes II, the 6'10 sophomore out of Dayton. Holmes is an excellent athlete, and his game's taken a really nice jump this season. He's super quick and mobile on both ends. He's an elite lob threat and roll man, has soft touch and a nice looking jumper, especially in the mid-range. And on the defensive end, he's really versatile and an excellent shot blocker. Overall, he's just a super skilled athletic big whose game should translate seamlessly to the NBA. So I have Deron Holmes II as my top prospect in tier 4 at 21. Now moving on to tier 3 with my prospects ranked 20 through 7. Starting tier 3 off at 20, I have Taylor Hendricks. The 6'9 freshman has been a major standout for UCF. He has been phenomenal, and at this point I'm very confident he'll be a one and done, as he should be a lock to go in the first round. He's been shooting it well, handling, finishing, and playing great defense, and I'm really excited to see how he handles some of the bigger matchups left on the schedule. He plays Houston tomorrow when I'm recording this, so we'll probably find out a little bit, but Taylor Hendricks is for real, and I have him as my 20th ranked prospect. Next up at 19, I have Khalil Ware, the 7 foot freshman out of Oregon. He's barely playing for Oregon right now, which is bullshit, but off the bench he's displayed his elite rim protection and play finishing, as well as a little bit of his impressive 3 level scoring potential. I'd like to see a bit more from him offensively, but when you're as great an athlete as Ware at his size, you're always going to be in the mix. I'm not sure how much we're going to see from him for the rest of the season, but right now I have him at 19. At 18, I have Terquavion Smith, the 6'4 sophomore out of NC State. He's been pretty inconsistent this season, but Turk has had some really amazing stretches as well. He's an NBA caliber shot creator with incredibly deep range. He's quick and bursty and has the ball on a string, and looks much better as a facilitator and defender this season. He still has to get stronger and finish better inside, but there's been some promising signs this season, and he's just a really fun watch. But for now, I have Terquavion Smith at 18. Grady Dick comes in at 17. The 6'8 freshman out of Kansas is an incredible shooter, probably one of the best over the last decade. He's also a really underrated athlete. He's really smart on the court, a good connecting passer, and just makes winning plays. He does have some work to do defensively, and I'd like to see him improve on his dribble pull up and floater package. But a shooter as good as Dick is is very rare, and he has a skill set coveted by every NBA team, so I definitely would not be surprised if he ends up a lottery pick. But for now, I have Grady Dick at 17. At 16, I have Cason Wallace, the 6'4 freshman out of Kentucky. Wallace is one of the best guard defensive prospects in a long time. He's been locking dudes up, but also shooting a very good percentage from three. His athletic limitations and ability to get to the rim might be an issue, and I would like to see more of him with the ball in his hands, as I really like his passing feel, but he's a Kentucky guard who's a great shooter and an elite defensive prospect, so he also could very well be a lottery pick. At 15, I have Dariq Whitehead, the 6'7 freshman out of Duke. This is kind of a placeholder spot as Dariq wasn't 100% when he was playing, and he just got injured again and it looked to be pretty bad. He struggled a fair bit when he was playing, he wasn't really getting to the rim and had some issues on the defensive end, but there were still flashes of his shot creation excellence, his touch is great, he started to shoot the ball a lot better from three, and he also had a few really good defensive possessions, but at the moment he's a very difficult eval for me, and I just hope he can recover and get back out there this season. But for now, I have Dariq Whitehead at 15. At 14, I have Nick Smith Jr. 
the 6'5 freshman out of Arkansas. This is just really a placeholder spot for him as he hasn't really played, but he looked pretty solid in the five games he's played. Obviously, he's a bucket, can shoot it from deep, and has great touch inside, but he did have some issues defending on the perimeter and also wasn't creating much separation to get his buckets and struggled to get to the rim in the half court. So we'll see how he fares when he hopefully returns soon, but Nick Smith Jr. has the talent to be a top seven pick for sure. Next up at 13, I have Bryce Sensabaugh, the 6'6 freshman out of Ohio State. Bryce is an absolute bucket. The rate at which he is scoring and the efficiency he is doing it with is just insane. He can finish inside, is a monster in the mid-range and also a very great three-point shooter. He's also gotten a lot better with the reads he's making when defenses collapse on him. There are times where he can settle for a lot of jumpers and he also has some work to do on the defensive end, but there is a lot to like with Bryce Sensabaugh's game and he is a special shooter and shot maker. At 12, I have Jet Howard, the 6'8 freshman out of Michigan. Jet Howard is another excellent shooter in this class, and he's also had some nice moments creating for himself. I really like what he can do in handoff actions. He has a rapid release and can really shoot it off movement, but he can also curl, get to the rim, or hit the mid-range pull-up. Defensively, he's really solid, especially off the ball, and I think he has a really good chance to be selected in the lottery. So I have Jet Howard at 12. The 6'7 freshman out of Arkansas, Anthony Black, comes in at 11. He's been very impressive over the first half of the season. He's an impressive finisher inside and also has great passing feel. He's been active defensively and has even knocked down his threes, although I don't think I'm quite a believer in his shot just yet. At times, he can struggle in the half court, but overall, Anthony Black has exceeded my expectations, so if he keeps it up, he'll probably be even higher by my next big board, but for now, I have him at 11. Coming in at 10, I have Maxwell Lewis, the 6'7 sophomore out of Pepperdine. Max Lewis was one of the top breakout candidates for the year, and man, has he been excellent. I just dropped a video on him, so you should check it out for a full breakdown. But real quick, Lewis is a super smooth athlete, an amazing shooter, and the self-creation this year has been wildly impressive. He's even drastically progressed as a passer and decision maker. Defensively, he leaves a lot to be desired, but he has the tools to be great, and I'm just really high on Maxwell Lewis's upside, and that's why I have him as my 10th ranked prospect. Coming in at 9, I have Brandon Miller, the 6'9 freshman out of Alabama. I was a Brandon Miller doubter at first, but he has really turned it around over the last 10 or so games. He struggled to get to the rim and finish through bodies, and he kind of looked like he lacked that necessary burst and vertical pop. But he's drastically improved in this area, gained confidence, and looks a lot more fluid when driving to the cup. The shooting is obviously incredible. He's shooting like 45% from three and it looks sustainable. He has a solid handle, the passing has been good, and defensively he's been solid all season. So if he can consistently play this good, it'll be very hard for me to not raise him even higher. But for now, I have Brandon Miller at nine. Next up at eight, I have Jarris Walker, the 6'8 freshman out of Houston. Walker's been a key part of one of the best teams in college hoops. He's been a monster defensively, protecting the rim and holding his own in space. And he's also had a lot of flashes and good moments offensively, showing off his athleticism, passing and shooting ability. I don't think he's going to be able to showcase all of his offensive game because Houston are just such a good team. But his defensive versatility, touch around the basket, processing and athleticism, along with the promising jump shot are more than enough to keep him in top 10 talks. And I'm a huge fan of Jarris Walker's game, but for now I have him at 8. At the top of tier 3 at 7, I have Gigi Jackson, the 6'10 freshman out of South Carolina. I've really liked what I've seen from Jackson. He only recently turned 18 and is the centerpiece of a really bad team, so he has had a few really rough performances. But the flashes of his handle and self-creation upside have been very impressive. The shot looks good, he can finish inside and he's had some good moments defensively. And as he develops and grows in confidence, I think he'll continue to improve and build consistency. And I think in a good NBA development system, he could become a great player. So I have Gigi Jackson at the top of tier 3 at 7. Now on to tier 2 with my prospects ranked 6 through 3. Starting tier 2 off at 6, I have Cam Whitmore, the 6'7 freshman out of Villanova. Whitmore was injured to start the season, but as soon as he returned, it was obvious he was a force to be reckoned with. He's a powerful and explosive athlete, a dominant driver with incredible strength and good touch around the basket. 
His jumper looks nice both from the mid-range and from three. And he's been shooting them with confidence, including some off-the-dribble shots. And after a great FIBA U18 showing, Cam Whitmore is continuing to make his case as the best college prospect. But right now, I have him at six. Coming in at five, I have Keontae George, the 6'4 freshman out of Baylor. Keontae George got off to a solid start this season, showcasing his elite shot making, deep shooting, and soft touch. I've also been very impressed with his passing. He's super creative and makes advanced reads even if some of them result in turnovers. And overall, he's just fearless. He's been solid defensively at the point of attack, moving well laterally, and using his strong frame to defend both guard spots and even some wings. Keontae George has been very inconsistent, but I really buy his long-term NBA upside, so I have him as my number one college prospect and number five prospect overall. At four, I have Osar Thompson, the 6'7 wing out of the overtime elite. Playing alongside his twin brother on the City Reapers, Osar Thompson has been excellent. We know what he can do as a slasher and finisher. Defensively, he's been a monster, averaging 3.7 stocks in just 27 minutes per game. His shot looks much improved and is falling for him so far. The competition level isn't great, but even against pros in the offseason, he was dominating. And he is just so freakishly talented and athletic that he has to be among the top guys in this tier. So I have Asar Thompson at 4. Just out of him, I have his twin brother and teammate, Amen Thompson. The 6'7 guard has been really impressive over the first half of the OTE season. No one can stop him getting downhill. The handle looks tighter, and he's been great defensively and as a primary playmaker. He's even started to hit a few more jumpers. I do think Asar is probably a little further along with his shot than Amen is, but I think with time and reps, it'll come around. I also have some concerns with his touch around the basket and the lack of competition. But again, he is an alien level athlete and immensely skilled and talented. And for me, I think Amen Thompson is almost a lock to be my third guy in this draft. Now moving on to tier one with my top two prospects. Coming in at two, I have Scoot Henderson, the 6'3 guard out of the G League Ignite. Scoot got injured pretty early on in the season, so he hasn't played a lot of games, but in the ones he has played, he's been great. He's found ways to impact the game even when his jump is not falling. Whether that be through his advanced processing ability to set up his teammates, or through his intensity and effort on the defensive end, but Scoot also has the ability to take over games at any moment. He can will his way to the basket, create separation off the bounce, and get to his spots. Scoot Henderson looks like a superstar already, and in almost any other year he would be a number one pick for sure, but right now I have Scoot Henderson as number two on my big board. Unsurprisingly, I have Victor Wembanyama as my number one prospect. The 7'4 alien level prospect out of France has been dominating against high level competition and doing it all on both ends of the floor. Not much else really needs to be said. Wemby has looked even better than expected. He's creating off the bounce, passing, finishing everything inside, all whilst being an imposing shot blocker with an 8 foot wingspan. He looks like he's filled his frame out a little bit more. The movement shooting and some of the highlights are just ridiculous. And as he continues to get more comfortable with his body, he's going to get better and better. So as expected, Victor Wembanyama is my number one prospect on my big board 1.0. Alright, that's all I got for this one. This is going to be one hectic draft cycle. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more content I'm going to put out there soon. I appreciate if you watch the video. Make sure to leave a like and comment your thoughts down below. Anyway, that's all I got. JB Hoops.